Hi, in this short tutorial I'm going to show you how to model this platonic solid in Rhino. This is named as dodecahedron and it's composed of 12 identical surfaces which are regular pentagons. This platonic solid can be modeled by using Rhino's built-in commands and most importantly it's a nice exercise to to study the rotate 3D command of Rhino. We are going to start by drawing a pentagon for the first face of this shape. I'm going to use polygon command, however you can also construct these pentagons by using the Euclidean constructions of compass and straight edge, namely circle and line in Rhino. However, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to skip that step and draw a regular pentagon by using the polygon command of Rhino. Then I'm going to create a planar surface like this. And if you remember the beginning of this video, the shapes uh, surfaces are identical and the important thing here is to find the angle of rotation to be able to uh, find the next piece of this shape and I'm going to use spheres and spherical intersections to be able to calculate that rotation angle. First of all we need to understand that the rotate 3D command of Rhino works in this way first you are going to choose a surface and after hitting enter the command will ask you to define a rotation axis it's like a hinge axis of a window or a door so when you define that axis the next question is going to be the point of rotation here in this case for example i'm going to rotate this part this point and then you can type an input angle or just place the next uh, target point of your rotation point. In this example, we don't know the rotation angle. That's why we are going to calculate it. Okay, so the thing is that I'm going to pl place spheres on the hinge axis that I choose, in this case my hinge axis, my rotation axis will be this one, okay? And the point that I'm going to rotate is this corner that I choose. So the rule is, I'm going to place two spheres which are centered on the hinge axis and the radius is between the center and my rotation point. For example, this sphere. Okay, and I need two spheres to be able to define my rotation path. I will use and intersect these two spheres to calculate my rotation path of this point. So that's why I choose a second sphere, this time on the hinge axis again at this point and the radius of my sphere is going to be between the center and my rotation point here. Okay, so the first sphere is this one and the second sphere is this one. When I intersect these two spheres, definitely I'm going to have one circle. So I'm erasing these spheres and this circle, as you can see, is giving me the path when I really rotate that point around that hinge axis. As you can see now, I can simulate the rotation path of my point here. So still I don't know the exact angle. Which angle should I click here to be able to rotate my pentagon? Uh, if you remember the, the shape of the dodecahedron, all sides are the same 
and they are all equal, equilateral, and all rotation angles are same. That's why I'm going to repeat that same process with another point of this, uh, another, another vertex of this pentagon to be able to intersect two paths. When I intersect two rotation paths, it will give me the point, not the angle, but the point to which I'm going to rotate these surfaces. So for example, I'm going to choose this point as the rotation point this time and this as the hinge. Okay, again, I need two spheres. First sphere is going to be centered on, on my any point is okay here. I'm choosing the endpoints to make it more clearer, but any two points on the hinge axis are okay. This one and open it to the rotation point. Again, another sphere on the hinge axis, this point and to the rotation point. Here again, I have two spheres. I choose them, intersect them, and erase the spheres. Now I have two circles, and right in the intersection point of these two circles, both my points are, rotation angles of my points are now calculated for this point and this point, okay? So I'm going to choose these two and intersect them. Okay, I have this point now. Let's try this if, it, if it's calculated correctly. Choose the face, rotate 3D. This is the rotation axis. This is the point and the next point here as I snap with my mouse here is the one which I'm going to rotate my pentagon to. It looks correct, but I forgot to copy while rotating. That's why I'm going to redo it by choosing the hinge axis, select copy yes, and then choose the point and click on the intersection point. When I move on the same process, uh, it, it becomes now very easy to finish the dodecahedron because the most important thing, as I reminded you in the beginning of this video, is to find the rotation angle here. We constructed that rotation angle with, with uh, spheres without entering any uh, mathematical value here. So I move on by rotating this time this hinge, this point, and here. Again, rotate 3D. This is the hinge, this is the rotation point, and this is my target point. Again, hinge, rotation point, target point. Hinge, rotation point, and target point. Now, we finished the bottom part of our dodecahedron. To complete the top part, you can you can follow the same uh, concept by just clicking one of the faces, rotate 3D. Just imagine which axis it's going to be rotating. In this case, for example, I'm going to rotate that around this axis and this is the rotation point if you follow how it rotates i click here so that it is rotated and copied by using the same angle that we calculated manually we continue the same process over and over again with with the hinge axis and the rotation point in this case this is the hinge axis rotation point and again, hinge axis, rotation point, and target point. So you need to be precise 
and you need to be using the object snapping commands. You should be zooming in and out and using keyboard and mouse combinations to see and visualize your model on your screen properly. When I finish these uh, 11 faces, I can choose all of them, join, and you see the cap is open. I type cap command to finish it as a closed poly surface. You can see that when I choose the object, select the object, it says it's one closed poly surface added to selection, which means this object is now a solid object that you can use for 3D printing or uh, unrolling and building its net model and uh, create the prototype of it quite easily. In another video, I will try to show you how to unroll this, this and other polyhedral shapes by using built-in Rhino commands. Thank you for watching. Bye.